So, No Man's Sky has an abundance of resources we can discover, ships we can gather, planets we can visit, fauna we can see, and many other things, but which of these items can truly be classed as rare? Now, I'm sure at some point all of us have come across things like Royal Exotic Ships, Paradise Planets, Diplos, S-Class Multi Tools, or different varieties of freighters like the Dreadnought for example. But some of the things I'm going to be talking about in this video make each of those things look rather common. In fact, some of these things are so rare there is only one very difficult way to either get them or see them, and another of them I've only ever seen once in my 6 years and 500 hours of playing No Man's Sky. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get stuck in. Now, these items are in no particular order of rarity and if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll be giving you the coordinates to find some of them as a little bonus as well. Now, I can't do that with all of the things on this list, but I can do it for some of them, so make sure you stick around towards the end. Now, I think I'll start this list big, like galaxy size big. And you might be thinking, surely a galaxy can't be that rare. There aren't even that many of them in the grand scheme of No Man's Sky, especially when you consider just how many planets there actually are in comparison. And next, you may be thinking, well, you must be on about the last galaxy surely because it would take a damn long time to get there, even when you know the portal coordinates to the centre of every galactic core. And as a side note, if you are wondering how I know the coordinates to each of the 255 galaxies galactic core, check out one of my previous videos telling you exactly that. I'll leave a link in the description for you. Anyway, the last galaxy, which goes by the name of, and I'm definitely, definitely going to say this wrong, Ayu Sungola. There you go, I do apologise for my bastardization of that name. But technically speaking, it's actually not the last galaxy. It's only the last accessible galaxy, and there is in fact one more. The 256th galaxy goes by the name of, and here we are for another bastardization of naming, Odiolutai. Man, where the hell are games come up with these names? Anyway, what makes this galaxy more rare than the other 255 you may be wondering? Well, it is because you can't actually visit this galaxy by conventional travel. And by that I mean galaxy hopping by going through the galactic core and moving through them that way. No, this 256th galaxy is in fact inaccessible through normal gameplay and has been since the Atlas Rises update. But there are only two ways of actually visiting it and the first one is to join the game of another player who is in multiplayer who happens to already be there. And the second option is to travel to another player's base there via the Nexus for example. But both of these are incredibly rare. There is potentially a third option, I'll get onto that in just a minute after I've spoken about two of the rarest resources the game has to offer. And you may be wondering, what are these two resources that are so incredibly rare? Well, I'll tell you the name of them and thankfully they're a lot easier to pronounce than the galaxies I just mentioned. First up there is the Atlas Stone and secondly is the Photonics Core which happens to be an upgrade for your Starship's pulse drive. See? Piece of cake to pronounce. But what makes these resources so incredibly rare? Well, let's start with the Atlas Stone, which by the way has the same icon as a Remembrance. So the Atlas Stone was, a bit like the 256th Galaxy, removed as part of the Atlas Rises update. So Hello Games must have done a bit of a purge during that, but because it was purged from the game, it means you cannot actually find it now, but it doesn't mean you can't actually acquire it. So how do you acquire it? Well, you need another player who has a couple of spare Atlas Stones in their inventory to gift you one. It basically is the only way. And since the Atlas Rises update came out over 6 years ago, the players will have to have needed to keep them lingering around for that long, which isn't beyond the realms of possibility because of how rare they actually are. But I will doubt you'll find many players willing to give you one at all. Righto, onto the Photonics Core, which is also incredibly rare in the fact that you can no longer access it. But unlike the Atlas Stone, this wasn't actually removed from the game during an update. It was instead a bonus granted to those of you who ordered the limited edition PlayStation 4 version of No Man's Sky. And it was also part of the day one patch, but I think that's the only way you could have got it. You won't be getting it in any other way unless you try this next method I mentioned just a minute ago. And even then, I'm not sure if it'll work at all for the Photonics Core. 
So the other way to access the seemingly inaccessible galaxy and the seemingly unobtainable resources would be to play an older version of No Man's Sky. Now I won't go into full detail on the method of how this can be done on PC and in theory if you have a day one physical copy of No Man's Sky on the PlayStation 4 and then you have perhaps stuck it in your PS4 or 5 whilst not being connected to the internet so it doesn't update. Now if you're a PC player why not have a Google on how to get the version 1 of the game. It involves a bit of tinkering and coding and then you can perhaps get these resources and then see that distant galaxy. I don't know if it'll fully work but it's worth having a go right? Now on to the next item of our list, so let's talk about your character's appearance, and in particular, your head. Now there are a number of different appearances one can have on their head, whether that be an alien race, a different iteration, or just a different cool helmet a bit like the one I currently use. Now some of these can be unlocked through quests, and others can be unlocked by purchasing them from the Quicksilver kiosk on board the Space Anomaly. However, not a single one of these items is what I'm actually talking about in terms of rarity. I am in fact talking about the exosuit, which is a helmet with a giant Xbox cross on the front. And I must admit, even though I play on the PlayStation, I would totally love to have this helmet, and I think it looks really feckin' awesome. But what makes it the rarest helmet? Well, you could actually only get this as part of a pre-order bonus when No Man's Sky was released on the Xbox. And there is no other conventional way to get it unless you know a thing or two about save editors, similar to how the previous step I was talking about. Anyway, I won't go into that method here because, well, you're guessing you all know how to use Google, right? So, let's move on and talk about the rarest starship. And as of the creation of this video, these are the different types of ship in No Man's Sky. So you've got shuttles, fighters, explorers, haulers, exotics, solars, salvaged, living and sentinel interceptor ships, and of course, some of these are more rare than others, but one specific type of ship is more rare than all the others in the game. And I can honestly say that in over 500 hours of gameplay, I've never randomly come across one of these, even when I've spent time ship hunting in my earlier days. The only way I managed to get hold of this was finding, sorry, was using the exact coordinates to it, and I found those over on Reddit at our NMS Coordinate Exchange which is a really great community by the way, you should definitely check it out. Anyway, I'm not talking about solar ships here, nor am I talking about the Alpha Vector or the new Sentinel starships. Hell, I'm not even talking about the Royal Exotic ships, I've come across a couple of those in my time. I am in fact talking about the Squid Ship. You know, the one I spend my entire time flying around in now. These are in fact the rarest ships you can find in the game and really, if you want to get your hands on them, you're going to need to know the coordinates up to them because as I said, in over 500 hours I've never come across one in the wild, so to speak. Now if you're watching this down the line and Hello Games have somehow decided to add in ship customization to No Man's Sky, which by the way I highly doubt, then any ship can be totally unique and rare because, well, we can make them look however we want. But as I said, right now, as of the creation of this video, squid ships are the most rare ships in the game. So let's touch back down onto a planet's surface and talk about the rarest fauna in No Man's Sky. Now you may be thinking, well, these creatures are all procedurally generated and are fairly unique themselves, so how can some be more rare than others? And to be fair, you're not really wrong. Creatures come in a whole host of different shapes and sizes in the game. They could be a large dinosaur looking thing, could be flying worms, hell I even recently saw a ball of light rolling around, and I could feed it, as you do. Anyway, I'd probably say that's up there in terms of rarity, but they don't top the list. Nope, the most rare creatures you'll find in No Man's Sky are in fact robotic ones. I can count on one hand how many times I've seen robotic creatures in the game in over 500 hours. And I just so happened to have come across a reddit post where someone found an ice planet with two different types of robotic fauna on, which is almost unheard of. You can ride them and they're pretty damn quick as well, which is rather cool. Now this next one, and I don't know whether to class it as fauna or not because, well technically speaking, it isn't. But you'll see my confusion in a second because I'm talking about walking rocks. 
Yep, some of you may not have even known that thing existed, but they are so incredibly rare. I've only ever come across them once in my time playing the game. And it was a huge fecker as well that attacked me. Now, these creatures tend to pop out when you're mining rocks for, say, ferrite dust. They'll just spawn some legs and usually they'll try and run away, which is quite a quirky little feature of the game, I must admit. Now, I did actually manage to record my only encounter one of these, but sadly I lost the initial footage. But I do have it in a short form, which is funky, so you'll have to bear with the format of this video for the time being. But seriously, look at the size of this walking fecking rock. Now, I've heard most people's encounters with these are much, much smaller versions of them, and this is by far the biggest one I've ever seen. It's incredibly rare to find these things, but if you do, you'll likely do it by mining rocks. And like I said, I've only ever come across these once, and this footage was originally recorded in December 2020. So that gives you an idea of just how rare these things actually are. Right, let's make our way back out into space and talk about planets, but for this one, I'm not actually going to be talking about the planet's biome or colour or whatever. That comes next, but one of the most rare sights in Noma Sky when it comes to planets has to be colliding planets. Now, Noma Sky has 18 quintillion procedurally generated planets, which is a fecking shitload, but how often do you come across colliding planets? Personally, I've only ever seen them when I've been given the coordinates to them on Reddit. So, as I said, in 6 years and 500 hours of gameplay, I've never actually warped into a system myself and seen them that way. And when you're actually down on the surface of a planet near the collision point, everything is on a slant and you're looking up directly at another planet, which is pretty damn cool. I reckon, in theory, though I haven't actually tried it myself, you could jetpack from one to the other, and the reason I haven't tried it is because it's actually very easy to die in these collision points. Because you could fall endlessly through the middle and then hit the ground, and well, we all know how that ends. Now, these collision points also have a knack for crashing the game, or at worst, corrupting a save file. So if you ever do come across them, just bear that in mind. But it does look freaking awesome though, don't you think? Now, I couldn't do a video like this and not talk about the rarest type of planet. Now, as you'd probably expect, the rarest type of planet isn't actually as rare as some of the other items I've included on this list, but I think it's worth talking about them anyway. So, currently there are 11 main types of biome and each one of them has a boatload of subtypes and some are more common than others, as you'll find out just by exploring the game. But the one I've gone for here, I've chosen because in six years, I've only ever come across this type of planet twice, which in my book is pretty damn rare if you ask me. Like, I had considered things like dead planets, true paradise planets, or even hexagon planets, but I've come across them more often than this type of planet I'm talking about, and that type of planet is a planet of light. Now, rather unsurprisingly, these planets are absolutely littered with light fissures, which you can actually add to your base once you've discovered them. But this particular planet of light I came across had one type of fauna on it, which was literally a glowing ball rolling around, living its best life. Now, I'd say that's a pretty rare fauna as well. But another thing you'll notice on this planet is that almost all the colour has practically disappeared. And no, I'm not using a video filter here. When you're on the surface of this particular planet, it's almost entirely grey. It's like playing No Man's Sky back in the 60s or something. Worth noting though, the other planet of light I came across didn't remove the colour, so this one must be even more rare. And they also tend to be stacked full of boundary failures as well, you know, because reasons I guess. I do have a couple of honourable mentions with rarity in the game, so sticking with planets, I'll go for the ones with giant, well, rings on them I guess. I call this one the donut planet because scattered throughout are these giant donuts. Like if you watch me zoom out here and focus just on me in comparison to the size, you'll see just how big these things actually are, like my character looks absolutely tiny in comparison. Many years ago I came across a similar type of planet with rings on them but they had plant life on the top, but those rings were just as big. I believe the official biome for these kind of planets are mega exotic, so whilst not as rare as Planet of Light, they are pretty damn rare but awesome to explore nonetheless. 
Now, if you've been paying close attention, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned multi-tools up until right now in this video. And the main reason for that is because, well, with the new staff being customizable, any of those could technically be classed as super rare because you can make them fairly unique. But I thought I'd give an honorable mention anyway, and probably the most rare multi-tool I could perhaps think of is the Royal Multi-Tool, but more specifically, an S-Class version of it. I've only ever come across C or B classes, never even an A, and especially not an S. Now, of course, you could upgrade them at great nanite cost, but finding an S-Class one at Sentinel Pillars is probably the most rare kind of multi-tool in the game. I've also not mentioned freighters in this video either because, well, everyone has seen a Venator or a Dreadnought in some form or another. And I suppose you could go on about S-Class versions of this as well, but I think the freighters you encounter when you're just randomly exploring space are more rare than these two because any space battle you'll come across will either be a Venator or a Dreadnought of some description. Now, I'd probably say the most rare type of freighters in No Man's Sky and this is based purely on the fact that I've seen them the least, are the Oculus class freighters, which also happens to be the largest regular freighter in the game. I'd probably say second is the Enterprise class, which of course looks to have taken some inspiration from Star Trek Enterprise, both in appearance and in name. So I promised earlier in the video that I'd give you the coordinates to some of these things. Now I obviously can't give you the coordinates to all of them, but some is better than nothing, right? So first up, here are the portal coordinates for a, a white crashed squid ship, and you'll want to be in Euclid for this. The coordinates are bird, sunset, sunset, bird, sunset, bird, 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 sunset, bird, and finally, yet another bird. Now, you want to fly to another planet within this system, and the planet you are looking for is called Wibig XIII. And the on-planet coordinates to this crashed squid ship are minus 33.44 and minus 82.08. Next up, I've got the coordinates to the colliding planets, which I showed earlier in this video, which again is in Euclid. And these coordinates are Diplo, Sunset, Dragonfly, Dragonfly, Sunset, Bug, Bug, Bird, Balloon, Face, Eclipse, and finally, a tent. If you want to go and see that grey planet of light with the funky little light up ball fauna thingy, again in Euclid, the coordinates are bird, sunset, galaxy, fish, sunset, face, galaxy, sunset, fish, atlas, galaxy, and finally another galaxy. You remember those funky robotic fauna from earlier in the video? Well, if you want to see those, you want to be in Euclid yet again, and the coordinates to see them are Face, Sunset, Bug, Tent, Atlas, Fish, Balloon, Diplo, Face, Fish, Boat, and finally another Diplo. And last, but by no means least, if you want to go and see the giant donuts, you'll want to be in Euclid yet again, and the coordinates you're going to need are Face, Bird, Sunset, Diplo, Sunset, Sunset, Fish, Bug, Sunset, Voxel, Tree, and finally an Eclipse. As always, shout out to the community over on Reddit at our NMS Coordinate Exchange for the coordinates of some of these insanely rare items. Without you, exploring No Man's Sky would be nowhere near as fun in my opinion. And I'd also like to shout out to the No Man's Sky Wiki fandom team because I learn a shed load about the game from you guys, so keep up the good work. And there you have it folks, there is a list of probably the most rare things you can either acquire or see in No Man's Sky, along with some honourable mentions. Now if there are any other things that you think are worthy of being included in this list, or indeed as an honourable mention, why don't you leave a comment below letting us know what exactly that is. Now, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and if you're still here, it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can now also become a channel member as well, and as always, thank you for watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.